Hello, good day friends, Marky Shaw here with a new video series on retro computers. Over the coming months I'll be showcasing a variety of different computers from our little computer museum at the Cards Technology Headquarters here on the good old eastern shore of Maryland. Some are from my personal collection and some are donations from friends and family. I've been a huge fan of everyone that's involved in the preservation of retro computing. LGR, The 8-Bit Guy, Retro Man Cave, Parafractics, Retro Recipes, Miss Mad Lemon, and so many others. Whether through the means of full-blown restoration projects, reviewing modern components for retro computers, or just telling stories about the days of old, not only does it fascinate me, but I always think there's an opportunity to learn something and get inspired. So today we're going to take a look at the classic Compact Desk Pro. The first ever Compact Desk Pro was an XT Class 8086 machine. They kept the Desk Pro name all the way up until the Pentium 4 processor started to surface. The machine we have today is the Compact Desk Pro 386S. This one is equipped with 2 megabytes of RAM, a 386 16 megahertz processor, a gigantic 40 megabyte hard drive, and 256 beautiful colors of VGA graphics. It's been rather difficult to find an old compact CRT monitor, keyboard, and mouse to match this thing, especially for a reasonable price, so I apologize for the modern peripherals. However, this machine still brings back some amazing memories. Although this is not my original machine, the Compact Desk Pro 386 was indeed my first ever PC, and at the time I was fortunate to have an upgraded hand-me-down from a friend who souped it up with 6 megs of RAM, both a 3.5 inch and a 5.25 inch floppy disk drive, and a Sound Blaster 2.0 card. With this machine I'm not so lucky with all those fancy specs. I had to scour the internet for many months to find this exact model in decent shape but a friendly fella that was eager to help out with the computer museum sold it to us for a good price. There's definitely some yellowing on the front and back face plates, however the metal case itself seems to have retained its color. On the back we have two PS2 ports for the keyboard and mouse, a 25 pin and 9 pin serial port, and of course the VGA port. To the far right is the IDE floppy controller, which I'll show you in a minute. Let's take a look inside. I'll go ahead and remove all these cards so we can get a closer look at everything. This is the controller card for the floppy drive, hard drive, and a possible tape drive if you have one. This was made by the Archive Corporation who manufactured tape drives and a variety of these controller cards. The next item is the RAM card. If we zoom in on one of these chips, they say AAA2801P-07, which according to the Googles is a 256 kilobit chip. Multiply that by 36 and you have 9216 kilobits, which is equal to about 1 megabyte. The other megabyte of RAM is on the motherboard itself. And here is our ROM chips. I discovered that this was the last revision of this particular ROM made for this computer. And here is the delightful 387 math coprocessor slot. As a youngin, I would obsessively flip through computer shopper catalogs bigger than a phone book and dream of owning the perfect computer. Most of the components at the time were way out of my price range, but I distinctly remember that at the bottom of the list was always a little glimmer of hope. Something I could afford. The 387 math coprocessor. Believe it or not, a variety of vendors still sold the 387, even during the Pentium's introduction. I never did get that 387, perhaps one day I'll get a chance to rectify that. Here's the dip switches for controlling BIOS options, and we have four full-sized ISA slots. This little beauty is the integrated VGA controller with 256 kilobytes of video memory. And here is the 40 megabyte hard drive. And over here is the floppy disk drive with a cool diagram cover that explains what the dip switches do on the motherboard. I'm going to put everything back together for now and we can take a look at some games and some other programs. 
If you guys like this video, I'll make a part two and we'll try to find some upgrades that we can install, maybe like that 387 math coprocessor and perhaps a nice sound card as well. I'll also disassemble everything else so we can have a close up look at the original 386 processor itself. All right, now let's turn this puppy on. Memory check looks good. This message keeps popping up, most likely due to a bad CMOS battery. We'll resume for the time being. Ah, beautiful MS-DOS. So quick and awesome. I installed DOS 6.22 on here and it works great. Let's run DOS Shell just for fun. I rarely used DOS Shell as a kid. The command line was always much faster for me, but I do miss the aesthetics of that interface. Alright, let's check out some games. Making a games menu using batch files was always a lot of fun for me back in the day. I had a very rudimentary way of making them, but hey, it worked just fine. The main games.bat file just consisted of the general design of the menu. Then I'd make 1.bat, 2.bat, or whatever to execute the game with a corresponding number. Super simple. One of my favorite games then and now is still the first ever Prince of Persia. Let's hear some of those tasty PC speaker jams. The Compact Desk Pro 386 played games like this with ease. I always enjoyed the quirky physics of this game as it was so much different than a typical side scroller. Let's try out another one of my favorite multiplayer games, Tank Wars. Basically a low-end version of Scorched Earth, this pixelated delight provided a great deal of entertainment and supported up to 10 players, which I've actually maxed out before. The next time you have a LAN party with some of your buds, have a few beers, get your friends crowded around the TV and play this game. Pass around the keyboard and prepare for lots of anger and laughter. All you need to do is pick your angle, power, and weapon of choice. Last but not least is another classic game called Chopper Commando. I loved this because it was such a small game in terms of file size. You could download it in just a few minutes on a 2400 baud dial-up modem from your local BBS and nearly everyone had it. Reading through the credits of this game, the developer said he wrote it in Turbo Pascal, which always intrigued me as a kid who loved QBasic and programming. The game is rather simple. Ride around in a helicopter and complete the mission. Fight your way around enemy pilots and ground attacks. Return to base and check back in with the general. And just for fun, I wanted to show off Telex real quick. Some of you might know that this is a terminal emulator that supports dial-up modem and serial connections. Our friends back in the 90s used this program all the time to dial up to each other's computers so we could chat, send files back and forth, and basically just goof around. And since BBSs were also huge at the time, there were a handful of locals that were sysops and had nice systems available to use, free for the community. Perhaps in part two, or maybe even part three, we can take a closer look at Telex and do some real life tests and file transfers from a modern computer. And finally is our good old friend Windows 3.1. Still an impressive and quick system for its time. It runs beautifully on this old 386, like they were meant to be. Oddly enough, I didn't use Windows 3.1 that often because most of my favorite applications were for MS-DOS. Of course, Windows came with some nifty software that I'd use from time to time, like early versions of Microsoft Works to write school papers and the likes, and of course the obligatory ski-free. My biggest priority with this machine is to get a proper sound card for it. It was capable of running Doom all those years ago. Although I'd have to shrink the display and put the graphics detail on low, it still worked and the sounds scared the crap out of me. So I'm definitely eager to get a sound card for this. Plus I'd like to play around with all the original Creative Sound Blaster applications again and maybe record some stuff. 
So I hope this was fun, taking a look back at one of my personal favorite machines, the Compact Desk Pro 386S. If you liked this video, feel free to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to receive notifications for when part 2 of this video comes out. Definitely plan on seeing more retro computer videos in the future. We really have an awesome collection of machines that I'm very eager to share with you guys. And of course, we'll take on some new Raspberry Pi projects, release some new tunes, and so much more. If you'd like to support the channel, visit my Patreon or PayPal links below. Your kind donations are much appreciated. Also, be sure to check out the description for links to some sweet original music. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day, and take care. I've got myself convinced that I am not